Welcome to the Metropolitan Theater here in Morgantown, West Virginia, and the kickoff of the 2018 midterm primary debates. Good evening. I'm Brett Baer. And I'm Martha McCallum. Tonight, you will hear from the candidates vying to take on Democrat Senator Joe Manchin in November. President Trump won big here in 2016, and Republicans believe that this seat may be ripe for the taking. So let's meet the candidates. First, we have Congressman Evan Jenkins, representing the 3rd District of West Virginia. Then West Virginia, <laughs> Attorney General Patrick Morris here. And finally, former CEO of Massey Energy, Don Blankenship. Candidates, welcome. So the rules of the debate are simple. Candidates will have 60 seconds to answer the questions, 30 seconds if they're given a follow-up after that question, and they also get 30 seconds if their name is mentioned by one of the other candidates. If the candidates go over their allotted time, they will hear this. Now, we don't like to use it. <laughs> because some of the dogs at home think that somebody's at the door. <laughs> so let's try not yeah. to use the bell, and let's get going. We'll do the best we can. All right. Well, as you all know, the opioid epidemic has uh, hit this country hard, and we're going to talk and about that in great detail tonight. But let's get started at the top of our questions. Congressman Jenkins, one. first to you. You are at the center of the stage tonight because you're leading in our latest Fox News poll in this race. Uh, your opponents on this stage, however, call you a card-carrying member of the political establishment. You voted for the $1.3 trillion spending bill, which conservatives called a bloated betrayal, essentially. And Republicans aligned with Senator Mitch McConnell are spending money to help your campaign. So I guess the question is, how do you convince West, West Virginia voters that, that you can drain the swamp if they think you're a part of it? Well, thank you, Brett, and thank you, Martha, and thank you to each and every one of you who are here this evening. I'm a proud West Virginian. You know, I haven't been up in the swamp very long. I took out a 38-year Democrat incumbent just a couple of years ago. I'm up in Washington actually working with President Trump. I have been fighting the establishment. I've been fighting the swamp. And what a difference an election makes. Look, we're already starting to see West Virginia turning around, working with President Trump, standing up with him. You know, I proudly endorsed President Trump in the May primary 2016, the only one up here on the stage who did that and have been standing with him each and every day. So we are bringing real results. Yes, we're cutting taxes. Yes, we're uh, uh, reducing regulations. We're making a real difference in West Virginia. In fact, leading the country uh, in a lot of ways, standing up for what we believe is West Virginians. Congressman, thank you. Mr. Blankenship, you were recently in prison for a year on a conviction in the UBB mine explosion case. You have, been, you have blamed the Obama Justice Department and that administration's war on coal, but many of these mining families did blame you. Can you blame them if they don't think it's right for you to go from the jail cell to the United States Senate? I don't think that's the uh, question we need to be asking. I think the question we need to be asking is whether we can prevent Upper Big Branch from happening again. This time it happened because the government cut the air in half and that work was finished only eight hours before a mine that had been in existence for 17 years exploded. Basically, the government didn't blame me. They blamed the coal miners for not doing their job which was terribly untrue. The miners were, had probably 400 years of experience. They did their job. Had I plea bargained during the trial, I would have been admitting that the miners did not do their job. So I couldn't do that. I faced 30 years in prison for a fake charge, and I beat all three of the felonies. They put me in jail because I, I did not stop the coal miners from telling each other that the inspectors had arrived. That's not a law that's on the books. That's the law that the Obama prosecutors made up in preparation for the trial. And the trial was incredibly violative of a person's human rights to a fair trial. They did things like, you know, in order to, to comply with the rule that they have to give us the documents they're going to use at trial, they gave us a million and a half documents and told us that the documents they were going to use were in there somewhere. It's incredible. They sent me to prison for a misdemeanor. I was the only prisoner uh, there that was a misdemeanor. It was clear from the beginning to the end that it was a fake prosecution. But, sir, what do you say to those who say that you have made it about you? Do you accept any responsibility for the deaths of those 29 minors? No, I'm accepting the responsibility to do everything I can to keep it from happening again. The government cut the air in half. Uh, the job was finished eight hours before the explosion. 
There's not much else you can say about it. You have to have an explosive atmosphere, no matter whether you have sharp bits or dull bits or plugged water sprays or no water sprays, you have to have an explosive atmosphere. The way you prevent an explosive atmosphere is a lot of airflow. And these guys begged MSHA, i.e. the government, not to make that change. The government should apologize to them and tell them the truth. Why didn't you insist they didn't make that change? Because I was not aware that they were making those changes. When you have 119 coal mines, it's impossible to keep up with what every one of them are doing. The things we need to do is we need to bifurcate MSHA into a regulatory and an inspector uh, group. Uh, investigative group like NTSB and FAA are in the aviation industry when you use, use maximum technology in the mines to control the atmosphere. And we also need to have a relief valve when the government's trying to make you do something that you don't want to do and your engineers are at, at odds with the government's engineers. They shouldn't be able to dictate what you do. Mr. Morrissey, uh, this is not your first attempt to get elected to Congress. Uh, you first ran in your native New Jersey, which Congressman Jenkins often mentions on the campaign trail. Uh, Joe Manchin grew up here and never left. He will surely call you a, a carpetbagger. So how do you counter that claim? Well, first of all, thank you very much for the opportunity that Fox News is giving us to be here tonight to show off West Virginia. We have an amazing state. And I feel very fortunate that I'm one of the folks up here who moved to the state by choice. I love West Virginia with all the fiber in my being. And that's one of the reasons why when I ran for attorney general, I knew we needed to change. We had a 20 year incumbent who was wreaking havoc on the state of West Virginia. I knew we need a conservative fighter to go after Obama overreach and give Obama everything he had. Fortunately, I was able to win in court time after time after time against Barack Obama. If anyone raises West Virginia values with me, show me someone who's done more to go after the absolute wretched excess of the Barack Obama era. We went after it. We won the Clean Power Plan, illegal amnesty. We've been fighting for pro-life principles. We're the conservative fighter of anyone standing here tonight. Well, we've been watching all of your commercials and your ads going after each other. Um, and so, Congressman Jenkins, I got to ask you, I'm from New Jersey. What, what are New Jersey values and what's wrong with them? Well, all you have to do is look at his <laughs> ad when he ran for Congress in New Jersey. Great picture of him, his campaign logo with Jersey. And the ad said, I will stand up and fight anybody who uh, goes against Jersey values. You know what? We need somebody representing our values. You can't change your values just because you change your zip code. But what are Jersey values as opposed to West Virginia values? Again, will, she's from New Jersey. I, I, yeah, <laughs> I'll let you define. We, we got two folks from Jersey here. I'll let you all talk about oh, you said, Jersey said there was values. something wrong with I'm them, happy. so I'm just curious what's wrong with them. You know what, West Virginia? Mr. Marcy, we'll get you in a second. Yeah. And, you know, I appreciate you being here. You know what? We do welcome. We do <laughs> welcome you. outsiders. We love having you here. People need to be coming to West Virginia for the right reasons. You know, Patrick Morrissey grew up in Jersey, made all of his living and his money and his millions of bucks lobbying in Washington, D.C., and then he went back to Jersey to run for Congress, and he did on his Jersey values theme. He came in last place in a Republican primary, then he moved back to Washington, D.C., making more money, and then he came to West Virginia, put his name on the ballot. You know, West Virginians see through that. This is not about shopping for a state for your political career. Candidly, we had that with a very uh, well-heeled Democrat who moved to West Virginia out of the Northeast. Once they set up shop, it's tough to get them out. We welcome outsiders. We love people moving to West Virginia, but we want them coming to West Virginia for the right reasons. I don't think you're getting an answer on I don't your think values, so but let's have a response, Ms. Uh, Attorney General Morrison. Well, a couple things. First, I think it's very clear. West Virginians want someone with conservative values. And I look up here on stage and I can say, I'm the only one on this stage who has always been a conservative. I've been strongly pro-life my entire career. 
Second Amendment rights. There's a reason why I'm the endorsed West Virginians for Life candidate, the Second Amendment group candidate, the conservative back candidate, because people know I have the conservative West Virginia values. If you look at uh, Mr. Uh, the Congressman, he actually has been very liberal. If you go Obamacare, checkbox, he supported. Hillary, he went rallied for Hillary. Nancy Pelosi, John Kerry, Planned Parenthood spending just a couple weeks ago. Evan, you should be ashamed of yourself for that outrageous vote, killing the unborn. Congressman, your response. Well, fortunately, Patrick's not being honest. There's not a penny in the bill that we passed to fund the federal government that's going to Planned Parenthood. If any money goes to Planned Parenthood, that's going to be the Trump administration. I actually led the charge. I've fought, fought in, to defund Planned Parenthood. I have stood up for life. And as a matter of fact, the National Right to Life Organization has given me a 100 percent voting record. You know, I'm the one that actually has a voting record. Patrick, Don, others can talk about how they will vote. 100 percent pro-life, 100 percent defending the Second Amendment with the national right to life. I will tell you, I won't uh, allow you to challenge my West Virginia values, my uh, proud, proud history of fighting for our state each and every day of my life. Uh, Mr. Blankenship, let's get you in the mix here. When you're asked about the carpetbagger question, you respond that, you know, a lot of people have houses in, in different states. Um, but, Mr. Blankenship, isn't it true that you live in Nevada? You pay taxes in Nevada. And, in fact, your probation officer is in Nevada, and yet you're running for U.S. Senate in West Virginia. Yeah, I've paid probably more taxes than anybody on this stage to West Virginia. And, uh, if, it, if it weren't for me, neither of these two guys would be up here. It's, it's funny that, it, you know, that Pat says the uh, only conservative on the stage. Conservatives weren't even popular in West Virginia until I caused them to be conservative by investing about $5 million of my own money. Uh, Honesty. I mean, it's funny to talk, hear politicians talk about honesty. I think that's odd. And as far as a voting record, I voted for the unborn when I've given hundreds of thousands of dollars to right to life. That's a real vote. You know, being able to vote or sue on the, using the state's money or whatever, that's pretty easy to do. It doesn't take any personal sacrifice to do that. I've made a lot of personal sacrifices, if you will, to stop uh, the bond that I would have wasted money in West Virginia to cut your food tax, which has saved all West Virginians a lot of money. Those types of sacrifices where you're a conservative or you take a position that's not popular is what it's going to take to drain the swamp. You can't drain the swamp being like the swamp. And if Joe Manchin comes after you for living in Nevada, what do you say? Then he's lived in D.C. too long. <laughs> Martha. 